Good morning. morning. It's great to be here together in the Lord's house on this 18th Sunday after Pentecost. Today our focus is going to be on Luke chapter 17 uh, and the account of Jesus healing the ten lepers. And we'll focus uh, especially on Jesus' words to the Samaritan leper, rise and go. And we'll see how not only does Jesus say that to him, but he also says that to us as we confess our sins and receive the forgiveness, life, and salvation that he gives to us. And so with that, uh, we'll begin our worship this morning by singing our opening hymn number 915. of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness, and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together, as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ, and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his son to die for you, and for his sake, forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <coughs> great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. 
I sought the Lord, and he answered me. And delivered me from all my fears. When the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears. And delivers them out of all their troubles. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. to your people and all their troubles. Grant us always to recognize your goodness, give thanks for your compassion, and praise your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning. The Old Testament reading for the 18th Sunday after Pentecost is from Ruth chapter 1. In the days when the judges ruled, there was a famine in the land, and the man of Bethlehem in Judah went to sojourn in the country of Moab, he and his wife and his two sons. The name of the man was Elimelech, and the name of his wife, Naomi. And the names of his two sons were Mahlon and Chilon. They were Ephrathites from Bethlehem in Judah. They went to the country of Moab and remained there. But Elimelech, the husband of Naomi, died, and she was left with her two sons. These took Moabite wives. The name of the one was Orpha, and the name of the other was Ruth. They lived there about ten years, and both Mahlon and Chilon died, so that the woman was left without her two sons and her husband. Then she arose with her daughters-in-law to return from the country of Moab, for she had heard in the fields of Moab that the Lord had visited his people and given them food. So she set out from the place where she was with her two daughters-in-law, and they went on the way to return to the land of Judah. But Naomi said to her two daughters-in-law, Go, return each of you to her mother's house. May the Lord deal kindly with you, as you have dealt with the dead and with me. The Lord grant that you may find rest, each of you in the house of her husband. Then she kissed them, and they lifted up their voices and wept. And they said to her, No, we will return with you to your people. But Naomi said, Turn back, my daughters. Why will you go with me? 
Have I yet sons in my womb that they may become your husbands? Turn back, my daughters, go your way, for I am too old to have a husband. If I should say I have hope, even if I should have a husband this night and should bear sons, would you therefore wait till they were grown? Would you therefore refrain from marrying? No, my daughters, for it is exceedingly bitter to me for your sake that the hand of the Lord has gone out against me. Then they lifted up their voices and wept again, and Orpha kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clung to her. And she said, See, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her gods. Return after your sister-in-law. But Ruth said, Do not urge me to leave you or to return from following you. For where you go, I will go, and where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people, and your God my God. Where you die, I will die, and there will I be buried. May the Lord do so to me, and more also, if anything but death parts me from you. And when Naomi saw that she was determined to go with her, she said no more. So the two of them went on until they came to Bethlehem. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle is from 2 Timothy chapter 2. You then, my child, be strengthened by the grace that is in Christ Jesus, and what you have heard from me in the presence of many witnesses, and trust to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. Share in suffering as a good soldier of Christ Jesus. No soldier gets entangled in civilian pursuits, since his aim is to please the one who enlisted him. An athlete is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. It is the hard-working farmer who ought to have the first share of the crops. Think over what I say, for the Lord will give you understanding in everything. Remember Jesus Christ, risen from the dead, the offspring of David, as preached in my gospel, for which I am suffering, bound with chains as a criminal, but the word of God is not bound. Therefore I endure everything for the sake of the elect, that they also may obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. The same is trustworthy, for if we have died with him, we will also live with him. If we endure, we will also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 17th chapter. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was passing along between Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered a village, he was met by ten lepers who stood at a distance and lifted up their voices, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. And he fell on his face at Jesus' feet, giving him thanks. Now he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus answered, Were not ten cleansed? Where are the nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Rise and go your way. Your faith has made you well. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord this time we confess our faith together with the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, 
and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who is spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated, and the children are welcome forward for the children's message. Good morning. How are you guys today? Good. Good. We just heard a reading from our our gospel reading about Jesus and 10 men who had a a very bad disease. Do you remember what that disease was called? Leprosy. Leprosy, right? That was a, it was a terrible disease. It was basically a a death sentence because there was no cure. There was, there was no medicine that they could take to uh, cure them of this terrible disease. Right, And so we've heard about that, but I also wanted to think about something today. Did you know that you and me and everyone out there has another terrible disease? Do you know what it's called? Sin, right? That's the worst disease of all, right? It's a terrible disease as well, even worse than leprosy. But the good news for us is that there is one cure. God. God, yeah, (laughs) exactly, exactly. Because God sent his son, Jesus, right, to save us from our sin. And how did he do that? That's right. He died on the cross, and then uh, three days later, what happened? He rose again. He rose again, right? He rose again. And so that same Jesus who who died and rose said to the, the, the ten lepers, rise and go. And he tells us, too, when we confess our sins, like we, like we just did earlier in our worship service here, we confessed our sins. And he told us that our sins are forgiven. And basically, he said, rise and go, for our sins are forgiven. We have been healed. And that's the good news that we need to hear each and every week, each and every day. Because daily we we sin and fall short of God's glory, but daily God gives us his mercy. He gives us his grace and he heals us of that disease of sin and gives us new life through Jesus. Okay, so we thank God for that today and I want you to uh, remember that as we go through the rest of our worship service and listen for that in the sermon, okay? Will you guys uh, fold your hands and, and pray with me? Heavenly Father, thank you. For sending Jesus to save us from the disease of sin. Help us to live each day in faith and trust in Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you guys so much for coming up. You can take one of these. Back to your seats, and our worship will continue with the hymn of the day.
We're not all ten cleansed. Where are the other nine? May this time and meditation upon God's word lead us to return to the Lord daily with thanksgiving for all that he has given to us. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, rise and go. No sweeter words had ever been spoken to this Samaritan leper. Those are the greatest words he could ever hear. Because now he was free, cleansed and free from his leprosy, forgiven and free from his sin. He was free to go. How sweet, how welcome those words were. Like a man on trial when the charges are dismissed or the verdict of not guilty is announced and the judge says, you're free to go. He was free from his captivity, free from his fear, free from his burden. Absolutely, 100% free. Rise and go. You know, I think a lot of times we take that for granted. We take it for granted because we do it every single day. We rise and go to work or school. We rise and go to run errands. We rise and go to different activities. This morning you arose and came here to church. But you know, the lepers couldn't do any of that. They couldn't just up and go and do whatever they wanted. They were outcasts. There were rules and restrictions. They couldn't get too close to other people lest they spread their infection. They couldn't go to church, to the temple, because they were unclean. They couldn't be with their spouses or children, grandchildren or families. The only people they could be with, the only people that they had for companionship, were fellow lepers. And even that wasn't much comfort because really all they could do was watch each other die. It was an inevitable fate. Leprosy was a death sentence. So rise and go, that was a big deal. It not only meant freedom, it meant a new life. So when this 10-man leper colony saw Jesus approaching one day, they call out to him from the appropriate distance, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. That shows they seem to know who he is. Perhaps they had heard of his teaching and miracles. Perhaps they heard he was a prophet and knew the story of Elijah and the healing of leprous Naaman. In any case, they ask for mercy. And they ask for mercy because they know that here is the one who can provide such mercy. This isn't just a cry of hope, but of faith. And Jesus does not disappoint. Jesus says to them, go show yourselves to the priests. And at first, that may seem kind of like a brush off, like Jesus is saying, hey, they're the ones who can declare you clean, not me. Go show yourselves to them. But there was something more, because they weren't clean. Jesus knew it. They knew it. And so if Jesus is directing them to go and show themselves, they weren't clean. So at his word, at his command, they go. What's going to happen? How? When? They don't know. But faith hears the word and trusts. Mercy doesn't always come as we expect it. And so they begin on their way, and they don't get very far, it seems, before they are cleansed. And when the one leper sees and realizes what has happened to him, he begins yelling and screaming with a loud voice, praising God. He runs back to Jesus and falls on his face at Jesus' feet. Giving thanks, yes, but even more than that. He prostrates himself. This is the, the posture of worship. He's praising God and giving thanks to Jesus. And those really aren't two separate acts, but one and the same. For there is God in the flesh. God whose word does what it says. God who gives mercy. Mercy even to Samaritans like him. 
Now, the other nine were not told what they did. Perhaps they ran too. Maybe they ran straight to the temple. But only the Samaritan realized that there was a new temple in town, a new dwelling place of God on earth with his people. It wasn't a temple of stone. It was a temple of flesh and bone. And to this temple, he runs. And so he is the only one who receives more. He receives more because that's what happens when we come to God. He gives and we receive. And so all were healed, but only one was saved. Rise and go, Jesus says. Your faith has saved you. Rise and go. Now he finally could. He was free. He had been given a new life. You know, a lot of people today ask God for a lot of different things, for mercy, for physical healing. The list of petitions could go on and on and on. And like with these 10 lepers, God gives many of these things for which we ask. He showers blessing upon blessing upon both believers and unbelievers alike. Clothing and shoes, food and drink, house and home, wife and children, land, animals, all that I have. He daily and richly provides me with all that I need to support this body and life. You remember from your small catechism. And he wants to give us these things. He desires to give us these things because that's who God is what he does. He doesn't begrudge us or seek to take back from us when we, like the nine lepers, don't return to give him thanks. They were healed, and I'm sure they stayed healed. And we receive much, even though we too often forget to give thanks. But here's the thing. The physical blessings are not the main point here. And when Jesus says, where are the other nine, it's not because he wants the thanks that he has coming or he's angry that he's not getting it. Actually, I think it's because he's sad. Because he wants to give more than just physical healing. He wants to give them forgiveness, life, salvation. He wants to set them free from all of their bondage including their bondage to sin, Satan, death, condemnation, and hell. He wants to keep giving. But the nine, presumably his own countrymen, don't return. The only one, the foreigner, the Samaritan, comes to receive, even though he has come to die for all of them. Rise and go. Your faith has saved you. How sad that only one leper got to hear those incredible words. And yet, how wonderful that one leper got to hear those incredible words. Those words spoken from the lips of God himself. By God who so loved this world of lepers that he came in the flesh not only to speak these words, but to make them true. To make them true by hanging on a cross for the sin of the world, for the life of the world. And brothers and sisters in Christ, those are the same words that are spoken to you today. The words of the greater gift. The greater gift than, than anything in this world. A gift that's far greater than physical health and well-being, things that we normally think of as being top importance. This gift that God gives us is so much better. For what God gives us are the words of of eternal life. And so we, lepers of sin, have once again gathered here in our colony that we call Grace Lutheran Church. And we cry the prayer of faith, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. The same cry of the lepers continues in the church today as we call out to the Lord, have mercy on us. For we are unclean. We're filled with sin. That's evident, right? We can just think back on this past week, how many times we have failed and fallen short, the things we've done, the things we failed to do. The evil thoughts, impure desires, the hurtful and angry words, 
We've not loved God with our whole heart. We've not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are dying in our sin. But the good news is that Jesus is here. For he has promised to be here. And here in heart and mind, we fall on our faces at his feet, at his cross, at his altar. We fall before him in repentance and worship. Again, not two separate acts, but one and the same. And from him, we hear those same wonderful words of release. I forgive you all of your sins. Take eat. Take drink. This is my body. This is my blood given and shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Rise and go. Your faith has saved you. And you see, we are free. His word does what it says. We are forgiven. We are free to go. Free to go and live. Not fearing punishment, not fearing our sins, not fearing our failures, not fearing the accusations of Satan, but confident that you and I have been released from our sin, from our bondage, from our burden, and free to live where God has put us. As a father, mother, son, daughter, husband, wife, worker, friend, or neighbor, we don't need to worry. We don't have to look over our shoulder. We can't go back to the old life. We've been set free. We've been given a new life. Rise and go, Jesus said. And so you and I also will rise and go and live. For again, God's word does what it says. In fact, this is what Jesus himself did. He rose to life. That's why he was on his way to Jerusalem. He went to die, but he died to rise. He laid down his life for you and me on the cross, but he took up his life from death. He died with our sins, but he rose without them. He rose from the grave, and so we know that we too will rise, even as we now rise rising daily from the waters of our baptism, rising from the knees of our confession. We heard that in our epistle text, didn't we? If we have died with him, we shall also live with him. His word does what it says. Rise and go. Again, perhaps we take that for granted. Right? We hear that every week. We receive Holy Communion each week. We hear it in God's word every day in our devotions. But brothers and sisters in Christ, remember who you are by God's mercy and grace. Remember who you are without God and his word. Remember the misery you would still be in if Christ had not set you free. Remember that apart from him, you can do nothing. You could not just rise and go. But your Savior has come to you and has had mercy on you. So you don't want your old life back. You and I, we were dead in sin. We were leprous, separated from God, separated from true life, separated from true freedom. But Christ, in his mercy, is here for you. Just as real as on that day on the border of Samaria and Galilee. He is here to give to you all that you need, both body and soul. And so you come here and you receive him. His body hung on the cross for you. His blood poured out to wash away all of your sin. You and I are not worthy. Nobody is. That's, that, that is exactly why he is here. Right? Right? to cleanse you, to forgive you, to give you a new life, to give you eternal life. And with those gifts given to you, rise and go. For what else do we need? You are a child of God. Rise and go with a full heart bursting with thanksgiving to God. For you are cleansed. You are forgiven. You are free.
Amen. At this time, please stand for the prayer of the church. Faithful Lord, by your Holy Spirit, teach us constantly to pray, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us, and to trust that you have cleansed us by his blood. Grant that we, like the former leper, would, would raise our voices of praise and joyful response to your loving care. Lord, in your mercy. God of hope, if we are faithless, you remain faithful, for you cannot deny yourself. Remember those you baptized who have departed from the faith. Grant them penitent hearts that they may obtain the, forgive, the salvation that is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Mighty Savior, guide and protect those who defend us against our enemies, those who preserve order against the threat of terror, and those who sit in judgment over evildoers, that justice and peace may prevail, and we may all work together for the common good. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. God of all help, you hear the cries of the righteous and deliver them from their troubles and fears. Remember all who cry to you for mercy, especially Lennis Gabithuller, Linda Gabithuller, Don Rahm, Dolly Newman, Jerry Graziano, Joe Graziano, Debbie Heitman, Jean Heitman, Heitman, Jolene Thrasher, Justin C., Kathy Kendrick, Nevin Curtis, Susan Burrell, Danny Griffith, Kenny Nilgis, and Ed Teal, and help them according to your good and gracious will. Lord, in your mercy. God of love, as your son visited and cleansed the ten lepers, grant that he would visit us with his body and blood this day, cleansing us of sin and filling our mouths with thanks. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful Lord, grant that we may with grateful hearts receive all these things according to your merciful will. Lead us to respond with voices of praise and thanksgiving and lives of holiness and righteousness displaying in outward form the faith that lives in our hearts. Give us faith that works in love, hope that does not disappoint, compassion that does not fail, and confidence in your mercy that does not waver, that we may live in your faith and fear all our days at the length, and at length fall asleep in the arms of your mercy and in everlasting peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. At this time, our offerings are brought forward. Give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name evermore, praising you and singing.
Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of all creation. You have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. In your righteous judgment, you condemned the sin of Adam and Eve, who ate the forbidden fruit, and you justly barred them and all their children from the tree of life. Yet, in your great mercy, you promised salvation by a second Adam, your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and made his cross a life-giving tree for all who trust in him. We give you thanks for the redemption you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Grant us your Holy Spirit that we may faithfully eat and drink of the fruits of his cross, and receive the blessings of forgiveness, life, and salvation that come to us in his body and blood. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Amen.
preserved to life everlasting. <coughs>
Please stand for the singing of the Nunc Dimittis. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for our closing hymn number 763.
It certainly is well with our soul, for as we heard from our gospel text, we have, we have been healed by God's forgiveness, uh, healed of the disease of sin, and given new and eternal life through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. A few quick announcements before we go. Uh, first of all, next Sunday is our church picnic following worship. The elders will be providing hot dogs and hamburgers. Uh, we ask the congregation please bring uh, a side or dessert. Uh, or dessert, or more dessert, you know, however that works. Um, um, but please uh, consider staying after and joining us for a fun time of fellowship together as a church family. Also, uh, keep on your calendars our Trunk or Treat event for Sunday, October 30th from 2.30 to 5.30. Um, there'll be a sign-up sheet next week, uh, but please consider... Um, having a trunk uh, for people to walk through and, and get candy. Uh, and if you're not able to, uh, please make sure to pass the word along uh, so we can uh, have this be a wonderful outreach event to more and more people in our community. Uh, thank you for your continued uh, help and support of the Holt Summit Food Pantry that continues to be uh, a blessing to our community. And so thank you for continuing to bring in food. Uh, there will be uh, no Wednesday evening Bible study this week, all right? And so um, we will have our Zoom Bible study Wednesday morning, but no um, Wednesday evening Bible study. Uh, next weekend is our rummage sale uh, on, fr on Friday and Saturday. Um, set up for that begins this afternoon at 2 o'clock. Uh, all help would be greatly appreciated as we get stuff ready for that. Uh, for this weekend. And so um, if you have any questions, you can talk to Gracie or, or myself. Um, but thank you in advance for your help with that. Um, also, a couple of Calvary announcements. Uh, tomorrow is the last day to order apples uh, for the Calvary apple sale. Um, on, the, on page 18 of your bulletin, there's a, a QR code that you can scan uh, to be able to um, order your apples online, so please consider doing that. Again, deadline is tomorrow. Also, this Thursday, the FFA at Calvary will be um, serving chili and chicken noodle, right, uh, from 5 to 7 p.m., and so um, please consider uh, joining for that uh, fundraiser there as well. Uh, also, if you haven't done so, please pick up your portals of prayer that began here in October uh, as we desire to spend time in God's Word every single day uh, through devotions and time, time in prayer. Um, and one other thing, um, we've been praying for, for Lennis Gabithuler um, as, he, as he recovers from a broken femur in, at St. Joe's. Um, you know, it's, it's been one thing after another for Lennis and his family, uh, not only mourning the, the death of, of, of Aaron, uh, but then this fall and, and, um, and just one thing after another. And so um, above and beyond praying for him, which, which uh, uh, is a great blessing that we're able to do, I'd like also for us to be able to send him letters of, of encouragement. Uh, and so... Um, on the back table, there's a basket that has some mailing labels that I put together that has his address there at, at St. Joseph Bluffs that you can put on a, a card or a letter. Uh, I think he would appreciate uh, hearing from his church family. I know he appreciates our, our prayers and, and, and uh, taking him to the Lord in prayer, um, but I think that would be a, something that would uplift him as well in, in getting the cards and messages from his church family here at Grace. Um, and so please consider doing that as you are able. Do we have any other um, announcements this morning? Sure. Carmen today. today after church, okay. All right, anything else? All right, well, have a great day in the Lord.